Amazing. All right. It looks like we're live. Um, this is going to be <laughs> a conversation. That's for sure. I don't know how we're going to cram all that we have into what 40 minutes or 30 or 40 minutes is what we have slated right now to talk with pastor Levi Lusco. So we've got a lot to cover, uh, in our time together, but first off, before I really open the whole show up, uh, Pastor Levi, thank you for being here with us. Thanks for the time. I know you have a lot coming up with Movement Conference, uh, pastor of a church, writing books. We'll get to all this stuff, but thank you for being here with us today. Oh my gosh, Jason. Thanks for having me. Long time listener, first time caller, as it were. <laughs> oh, that's, that means a lot. Thank you. Um, cool. So like I said, we've got a lot to cover today, but we're going to be camping out on church leadership for the most part uh, for ministry, but at the tail end... Um, my show notes say it's the icing of, on the cake today, is uh, we're going to try to work through Pastor Levi sharing his screen and actually working through Logos a little bit because he's he's an avid user himself. So uh, yeah, thank you so much uh, for being here, anyone who's tuning in live, and of course, Pastor Levi. So there's a ton to cover, like I said. If you are tuning in live, stop for a second, jump down to the comments and let us know where you're watching from. Uh, let us know how long you've been using Logos, uh, your favorite thing about uh, about Fresh Life Church, about uh, any favorite books of Pastor Levi's, um, anything that will help add to the conversation so we can learn who we're, uh, who our audience is today. And, and with that, I'm going to kick off. There's a lot to cover, like I said. So, hey, Pastor hey, Levi. You, you can just call me Levi, bro. We're good. We're friends. Thank you, sir. So, uh, first off, you just, I cut you off right at the beginning because you said that you've been to Greenville. So, I want to get that out Are of the sure? way. You I've, spoke in I, Greenville? I, I, well, I... I, I, I spoke in Charlotte and we took a drive through Spartanburg, I think to Greenville. I think we did some hiking. Is there hiking trails up where you're at? There's a lot of hiking. Yeah. I'm in Greenville, yeah. South Carolina. For those who don't know, Bellingham is where faith life is located, but I'm over here in Greenville. So yeah. Yeah. So yep. we went through, I think we went to Greenville and did some hiking. And I remember we finished the hike and there was a cooler of cold Topo Chico's and everyone was so excited, you know, cause nothing like better than a Topo Chico when you're done hiking. Maybe you can let us know in the chat if you have a hot take on that, uh, <laughs> you're more of a LaCroix person or a Perrier person, or you're someone who, uh, doesn't drink, uh, sparkling water. I would call you a Gentile. Um, uh, but you know, whatever it is. Um, but then no one had a bottle opener, so we couldn't uh, figure it out. So there was a state like tra hiking trail sign and we ended up, you just, the Topo Chico's on that and pop them all off. So I tried that once and I bust the top off of the glass bottle. I probably shouldn't have said that live. No, you should. You should happens. admit all Topo Chico uh, problems on the air. That's my policy. In fact, if, if since we're on the subject, I will admit that I was once in Nashville, Tennessee, trying to open a Topo Chico uh, before a worship conference, worship set, and I broke my pinky finger, legitimately fractured it's, the bone opening a Topo yeah. Chico. So. I, I feel like we could just change the whole thing and just talk about Topo Chico for like 30, 40 minutes. And I think you sat down problems and all, you know, and, and yet I'm still a big fan, you know? So, yeah, but that's not what you're drinking right now. I, I, uh, I got a Perrier here and yeah, then I've I'm got a saying. coffee here. I'm a man of many beverages. What are you drinking over there? Well, I got my logos mug, which a lot, a lot of people product. are going to have a problem with. Product placement. Product placement. And uh, yeah, so I'm, I've am i got my coffee going. It is four, so it's okay. It's four, I'll stay up a little bit. It's four, and you're drinking full caffeinated coffee? Yes, sir. I try to cut myself off after like two, so I'm flirting with danger here. It's 2.05. Otherwise, I'll stay in bed awake on that. Are you that way? Uh, yeah, absolutely. But I've got a really, <laughs> I've got an incredible conversation with this pastor from Montana, and so I've got to stay awake a little bit and make sure that I'm, you know, Anyways, so uh, yeah, let me introduce you. We've got a lot to cover, like I said. Um, so yeah, Pastor Levi, uh, you'd probably say, I'm, gonna, I'm just going to read the bio and then you fill in the blanks on things that I missed because there's a lot. So Pastor Levi, I'd probably say played, that he's- What if we played Mad Libs with it and I get to insert a fake word <laughs> for any of blank. the adjectives or nouns, you know? Pastor Levi grew up in a spaceship. Uh, Mad Libs? Married, yeah. <laughs> A horse, you know, just like make up random things. Sorry. I'll pause and you drop the word in. I'm never getting invited back. That's clear. That's clear to me now. So I'm going to take advantage of this fully while we're here. No, you're, you can come back. You should just co host with me. Yeah. Anyways, so uh, husband and father, first and foremost, I would say. Um, 
Yeah, but you are likely known as a pastor of Fresh Life Church out in Montana, uh, Wyoming, Oregon, uh, Utah. Are these, is that right? Yeah, and then Idaho. Oh, and Idaho. Okay. So then, uh, and then probably you have your online campus or online stream as well. So I want to get into that a little bit um, as we keep talking. But you've also written books and not just like one or two, but I feel like there's eight or something like that. And you've I think authored... we're at seven, seven books. Okay. So one just released in January, uh, The Last Supper on the Moon. And then uh, Through the Eyes of a Lion, Swipe Right, I Declare War, uh, Take Back Your Life, and Roar Like a Lion. I think that may be all of them. Bro, you tried crushed to... it. You Thank crushed you it. So. And then my wife and I have a book coming out in uh, November. Oh. <laughs> it's our first book together that we co-wrote. Um, it's not been formally announced, but you know, here we are. Here we are, Jason. Uh, and yeah. It's on Amazon. So anybody who's smart can find it if they search for my name, even though I've not technically announced it. It's funny how that works. Amazon populates with their thing on their own time schedule. They don't check in with anybody if it's okay. So Amazon. it's out there in the ether, as it were. What's Amazon? I haven't, I'm not familiar. Yeah. It's a so little, little known Logos. company that's taking over yeah. the world. Yes. And then uh, you, when you have extra time, you travel, I guess, and you speak, like you said in Charlotte, and all over the world. What's your favorite place that you've spoke or that you visited? Just top of your mind. What a great question. Um, South Africa is tough to beat, bro. <laughs> you know, Cape Town, um, Johannesburg. Uh, got to pet a lion. I was very excited about that. A lion cub um because the eyes of a lion had just come out so getting to be with an actual lion cub and look it right wow. in the eyes was pretty special um, not while you were speaking those were two no, different no. okay it, it was afterwards it was right yeah. after we preached yeah. it was like what do you want to do? do you we're in africa do you want to go pet a lion and here's the thing jason if you get offered to pet a lion there's only one answer to that question my friend and the answer is absolutely i do absolutely yeah solid uh that's cool south africa i feel like that'd be i mean charlotte and then greenville spartanburg i feel like that's up there too but that's fine i enjoyed yeah. charlotte too you know look here's the thing about me i really like all places there's unique things at every city um like i like pittsburgh who likes pittsburgh i do this guy does i like um i like all places getting to know different i mean i was born in pueblo colorado yeah. it's a podunk little city no one's ever heard of but i liked it too and i think you know wherever you are you can figure out something fun about it. Yeah. So your shirt is the next place I want to go, which I don't think most people thought that that's what I was going to say, but I want to talk a little bit about your shirt and even your hat. And so you I mentioned real quick that you're a pastor of Fresh Life Church out in Montana, based in Montana, started in Montana. Curious why Montana, but maybe you can roll that into the answer as well. Um, what's movement? What's Fresh Life? And why is everybody talking about it all of a sudden? Well, um, movement is a step of faith that we're taking. You know, we're 15 years into this journey called Fresh Life. God called my wife and I to start a church 15 years ago. It was a Bible study that we started a, a, in a little room above a bar, and it grew into a church, surprising us most of all, because we were happy preaching and leading in California, and God had us come out here, and we showed up the year before the big recession, and it was a tough time to be doing anything, especially building buildings or starting things from the ground up, and um, and and yet it has blossomed and bloomed, and God has saved people, you know, through the preaching of His Word, and communities have have been touched by the tune of millions of dollars that we've been able to give away to our non profit outreach partners and um, feeding homeless people, helping teen moms, uh, planning churches. Um, and then the last couple, well, we always did a summer camp, you know, for our church. I got saved at summer camp. I'm a firm believer in the power of pulling students out of their environments for Bible study, for time under the stars, all that. So we, mm -hmm. ever since we started the church, we would do retreats and winter camp, summer camps, that kind of stuff. But, um, but then the last couple of years has been really hard on young people, I think, to a really horrible degree. And studies are showing the rates of anxiety among young people, rates of despair. Uh, one out of five, I think, is like the amount of teenagers that are have thought literally like, you know, maybe there's no point. Maybe I should take my life. And we had a big what they call a cluster of suicides that shocked our community, um, mm. rippled through our, our little sleepy valley. And, you know, it's not 
anything new to the rest of the world. Young people thinking, I'm just going to check out of life. And, you know, part of it is hot take, uh, Jason, but, you know, kids are being told in school, you're an accident. There's no purpose. There's no creator. And then, you know, part, I think a logical yeah. connection to that despair is it, well, this just ended all. What does it matter? Right. If I'm just mm -hmm. an accident, if there's no intelligent design and no, no God, no heaven, no hell. Um, sorry about that. R2D2. It's letting me know I had a text message. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> Thanks, honey. Um, That's solid, though. I, I, yeah, thank you for sharing all you that. You like yeah. that? I mean, RTD2 oh. also, but also, but oh, yeah. So we said, Lord, what do you want us to do? I think Andy Stanley's yeah. the one who said, God reveals his will through broken hearts. And our heart was broken. And I feel like God was saying to me a year and a half ago, two years ago, you need to pour some lighter fluid on summer camp and scale it and make it bigger and better and offer more opportunities for young people to know their worth in Christ and the power of the gospel. And God's plans for marriage. And, and I, you know, I was like, yeah, it's a good point. I speak at youth conferences around the country, big ones, Florida, yeah. Georgia, Alabama, but the connection to all those things is it's East, 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 East. And there is something about the West that's hard, but that's also a magnet. Mm -hmm. Ask Lewis and Clark, the Oregon trail. There's something about that Westward spirit. And that's where God's given me the call to live and preach the Rockies, this coast. And, so we just said, Hey, well, what if we blew our summer camp up and started inviting other youth groups to come in? And so I, you know, texted some friends, uh, the Tebos and Carrie and Cody Carnes and, uh, Crowder and Phil Wickham and, you know, just and my pa pastor, Rich Wilkerson, Chris Kilala. And I was like, Hey, would you guys come? We rented this rodeo arena. What if we did like a full blown Yellowstone meets passion type approach to summer camp outdoor conference worship under the stars, let kids sleep in tents, like let it be full blown. Yeah legit in the dirt man and and all of a sudden yeah. like to my surprise yes 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 and then we yeah. put it out there and i figured we'd get youth pastors from colorado and oregon but we have youth groups coming from massachusetts and texas and oklahoma and 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 who knows what will happen but we're going to keep doing mm -hmm. this every every august and we're already locked in for next year and year after that and i think it's just going to grow and grow and grow and uh, we're just, we're grateful to Logos for sponsoring it and be, sure. being partners with us. And I think we're just going to see a move of God's Holy Spirit in young people as Jesus is lifted up and he draws people to himself. Yeah. Well, that's solid. I kind of want to, we have a lot more to cover, but I want to camp out on that uh, more. Camp I did share the link. out on that. Pun. Camp out on that. Thank you. And I, the links in the comments for sure. You know someone, if you're listening and you know someone who should be there or a church or a pastor or a group of students. Um, and so, yeah, be sure to share that link. Um, and honestly, share this conversation we're seeing too. parents come too. like, we have youth pastors coming in. It's not oh, too late. We're nine cool. days out, but yesterday a pastor texted me, Hey, we're going to bring, I'm going to do it from, I think Missouri, but, um, moms and dads who have teens, you could get on a plane yeah. with your teenager, get in the car, do a road trip, come see Gl Yellowstone or Glacier on the way. And the cool thing is we have morning sessions, night sessions, but your days are free. So you can whitewater mm -hmm. raft or you can go horseback riding or hiking or you can do whatever, you know, but you could get your teenager. It could be a really meaningful thing for them. Yeah, sweet. And that shirt will not be there if anyone's wondering. This was one I'm of sorry. the shirts we did I one just, of one, but. I just want to let everybody know uh, that won't be there. Uh, wow. So cool. Thank you for sharing on that. And I want to jump into your life a little bit, Pastor Levi or Levi, if you will. I'm sorry about that. Uh, so. I heard an interview you say minority in a sorority. Oh, uh, yeah. Uh, and so I don't know if you recall that interview, but I just thought it was great. So can you tell us a little bit about your your family? Um, and I want to set the stage for really for a pastor that's juggling a lot. And you may not feel like you're juggling a lot. Maybe you do feel like it. But uh, I want to transition slowly into talking to some pastors who may feel like they're just like all over the place. But I'd love to get... Uh, a little bit of a glimpse into your family life. Um, and then we'll talk about you as father, husband, and then pastor, and then author. So sure. Who, tell uh, us about your family. I, Jenny was and your family. I was a minority in a sorority, but I'm not anymore because yeah. uh, my wife and I had, after four girls in a row, a little surprise bundle of joy named Lennox <laughs> Alexander, who was born five years ago. And he is uh, just a gift from God. You know, someone prophesied over us that our home, that, um, God was sending Lennox in so that the blast of his laughter would wash away uh, the continued residue of grief that was left in our hearts through our daughter going to heaven after 
Um, after she was uh, taken from this world uh, in an asthma attack at the age of five. So Linya was our second. Lennox is our fifth. Um, and it's been so true. That little boy's laughter is just constantly in our ears yeah. and God's just used it in great ways. Um, so there's Olivia, who's my oldest, uh, Daisy second left still after Linya, uh, then Clover and then uh, Lennox. And then my wife is Jenny and she and I uh, have been married for 18 years and uh, wow. awesome. been uh, having kids and planting churches and writing books and and, and laughing ourselves silly in between. We love to make each other yeah, laugh and awesome. we cry. That's our big goal. Like if I can make her laugh until she cries or vice versa, it's been a good day. That's solid. Yeah, that's that's great. That's great. And uh, so like speaking to pastors who feel like they're juggling like a lot of different things for a moment to camp out on father or husband, what would you give church leaders who are walking the wire, they're trying to juggle it all? Like, what would you say to them? Um, like, how do you, how in the world do you do it? And congrats on 18 years. That's solid. Yeah. I would say you're not crazy and you're not mistaken. It is hard. It is hard, yeah. but it, it's, but it's, it's hard if you're in insurance, it's hard if you're a firefighter, it's hard if you go to overseas at war, I think it's always easy to think like, Oh, everyone in church life, it's way worse. And yes, look, it is hard, but life is hard. You know, if you, if you went to go to Afghanistan as a, as a soldier, that would be challenging and unique. We have a unique complexity to our mm -hmm. mi ministry, vocational work. But at the same time, there's also a grace equal to the calling. God never gives a calling without an enabling. So if you go to the army to, and they say, we're going to have you fly a plane, they're not going to say, did you bring your plane? They give you mm -hmm. the F-16. So I think Ephesians 6 says, be strong in the Lord and in the power of his might. There's a power equal to your calling. So make sure you're tapped into that power. Yeah. Can I push, can I lean into that? How do you do that? Like, what does that look like for you? And it's not I, a logos plug, I swear. Yeah, no, it's good. Uh, well, I, well, it doesn't involve logos, so you don't have okay, to have so. a plug. I don't let technology infiltrate my quiet time. And I know this is a hot take, and I love you version. I love logos. I love all the apps. But when I'm having time with Jesus, I am di I am digitally free, man. I am I have mm -hmm. paper. I've got pencil. Literally, I've got a bank, I've got a, a old school Bible. I've got a fire eye light, and I sit out with my trees. Um, that I planted six years ago that I like the sound of the rustling of them. And that's for me, yeah. just my Jesus time. Now, that being said, I use logos ridiculously, which I'll show you in a moment and have since I was a youth pastor. Um, I remember cool. scraping together the money to buy my very first logos, which I, to this day, am grateful for that investment. And I would make it mm -hmm. again. Some of the best money I spent, I was an assistant youth pastor making very little money. I spent $429 a month in my apartment. I could hardly afford to turn the heat on. I ate ramen noodles yeah. and Diet Mountain Dew, but you know what? I, I spent whatever the two, three hundred dollars it was for my very first logos package. Mm -hmm. And I've upgraded it over the years. I've got the scholars and I've got, you know, I've, I've got full tilt now and I've added books in here and there, but not your own um, yet. You haven't added your own yet. We just talked about that. Yeah. My own books. I don't even have what's it's the matter okay. with, with we'll this talk universe. About that. But, but yeah. I, oh, so yeah. So I spent time with Jesus before I let the craziness of the world intrude in my life. And that's, that's how. You tap into that power. Yeah, but you, I mean, something I want to highlight is that you did say, you're like, I got like my study time and I've got like my quiet time. And those are like, I feel like um, I've worked in church. I've worked in church ministry. I've worked in church settings. Uh, it's important to separate the two. Uh, and that's all. I just wanted to highlight that. And that may be one of the easiest, not easiest, but one of the most pointed tips for leaders, church leaders out there right now. So, Yeah. Yeah, it's true, but it's, that's not a firewall, you know, because there's so much that I bring over across that bridge. Mm -hmm. And like, it's not like I'm like, don't my time with Jesus. Now I'm in my sermon prep. And so it's like, I'm just cold and intellectually processing. Of course, the best thing you're going to give your church is something that lit you on fire. But that, but, but I do have, hey, I'm not coming in with an agenda to this quiet time. I'm not coming in yeah. with a, I have to give a sermon out of this, you know, but there does, it's amazing how many, like this weekend, I preached Psalm 128, your children like olive plants around the table. But in my quiet time, I'm in Isaiah. And I had read two days before that, Isaiah 11, Jesus is a branch out of the stump of Jesse. And of course, we know olive trees get cut down. New life can grow out of the stump. So it's amazing. God, I was like, thank you, God, that I'm reading that, which so appropriately applied to my sermon, even though it wasn't technically sermon preparation time. Yeah, solid. Appreciate that. And yeah, I just think that that's something that uh, like pausing, slowing down and then having your own time, though. And sometimes it will cross, but 
sometimes it's pausing and making sure you're taking care of yourself first. Yeah. So, there's nothing selfish about self-care. Yeah. Um, I want to can't, I want to move on a little bit to author and make sure that we have time to watch you run through logos Bible software. So on the author front, um, where should someone start with the collection of books that you've published and why would you say that they should start there? Um, well, I guess I would, I would depend on what you're going through. You know, my newest book I'm most excited about cause it's new. It's like, you know, just what's your favorite Bible study you've ever given the one I gave Sunday, you know what I'm saying? But, yeah. um, the last supper on the moon. NASA's 1969 lunar voyage, Jesus Christ's bloody death, and the fantastic quest to conquer your inner space. I open up for the first time about my struggle with panic attacks and anxiety, which I've had uh, a lot of people who are, o you know, type A, OCD driven, do tend to suffer from anxiety. And so that's a good thing. It's because I'm wired tight that God has been able to use me like a drum because I'm wired tight, mm -hmm. but it also comes with the downside of it's hard to turn that off. So, you know, a lot of time at bedtime, sweating, you know, nervous, heart racing and hard to, to turn de that down. Um, but I, I love the connection to NASA because a lot of astronauts who went to space first, well, all of them had to get spun in the centrifuge, you know? And so there's, there's, there's a connection to, I think Jesus was having a panic attack in the garden of Gethsemane. I think that's full blown, like what he was feeling, the pressure, he felt like he was going to die. That's how a lot of times you feel in those moments. So the connection between outer space and inner space. I explore in that book. I talk frankly about that and talk about the things that have helped me through as well as, um, the unifying metaphor of the book is the fact that Buzz Aldrin brought communion elements with him to the moon in 1969. And he actually ate and drank remembering the body and blood of Jesus as the first thing ever eaten on the moon. And so I kind of use that as a, as a metaphor to, uh, explore what connections there are, between Jesus and his mission to go to the cross, which is to me, what's helped me the most with anxiety and any difficulty is finding everything yeah. I need in the cross um, of like, like Paul said, but then also considering the unique metaphor that JFK throwing the gauntlet down of we're going to send a man to the moon and back by the end of the decade. So to me, it provides this beautiful kind of Psalm eight when I lift my eyes and consider the stars who, who am I that you would be mindful of me and who's the son of man that you would visit me? And, uh, so that I had so much fun. I worked almost two and a half years just laboring on that book. It's to me, my mm. favorite thing I've ever written. Yeah. Yeah. Um, did I feel like too, and I'm like thinking through this while you're sharing first off, appreciate you sharing on something so like intimate, like anxiety, uh, and panic attacks and, uh, getting up on stage and sharing about Jesus, you know, the, the next week or, you know, it's just, I, I really appreciate the transparency. Or, or 20 so minutes later, I had a panic attack in my ready room before I preached in 2020, you know, so literally yeah. began it's communicating like, right after that. It's, it's real. And that, and to those listening, you're going through that, mm -hmm. you're not crazy and there's not something wrong with you. There may be simple tweaks you can make to your schedule that can change that. Yeah. There probably may be spiritual. You may need, need someone you can, re, you know, release that to. And it may be just, it may, you may need medication, you know? Uh, and, and there also could be things in your diet. Uh, I found out I was on a pre-workout that was enhancing those things. It was too much caffeine and work, something I was taking as a supplement. So, yeah. you know, you got to exhaust every different avenue. Yeah. Switch to Topo Chico for your pre-workout. But exactly. I, I also cool. think that it's, it's relevant. I think it's like, it's a message that like, especially given the last two years, as people were experiencing new things, uh, personally, I feel like I'm glad that you went that route and wrote that book. So, uh, yeah, so that may be the one that you'd suggest maybe because it's the most, pre most, uh, you know, the newest to the table. Is that what you'd say? Yeah. There's also through the eyes of a lion, which I talk about mm -hmm. pain and how inside pain there's power. Talk about my daughter going to heaven and how God used that to unlock, um, strength in our hearts, grief. Jesus said, God is near to the brokenhearted. Well, if God's near to you, there's going to be some benefits to that by way of what, you know, he's right there. So, um, that, uh, then there's, I declare war four keys to winning the battle with yourself. Talk about emotional intelligence. And, um, I talk about uh, self-management in that one because the biggest predictor of success in any endeavor is your ability to regulate your own emotions and read the room and, and manage mm -hmm. yourself to, to that. That's a, uh, uh, another one. And then I wrote, um, uh, sexual purity, 
God's life and death plan for sex and romance, which is called Swipe Right. That one's about dating, how to make decisions with porn, Tinder, uh, teach your kids about sex in a meaningful life giving way. And then there's one for children called Roar Like a Lion, how to teach about death, bullying, heaven, hard conversations with little kids. That's I love reading it to my kids. It's hopefully yeah. something that you could read to yours. Nice. Yeah, cool. Thank you. Uh, thanks for running through the different ones as well. Uh, I hope that someone, you know, that jumped out to someone who's listening in for sure. Um, and then a few, a little change of gear here is uh, really ministry, next gen, disciple, uh, digital discipleship. Uh, this is something that's just really interesting to me. So I like to go here whenever I can talk with uh, someone who's a church leader. And so I also think you have a lot that you could probably speak to here. So I have a few questions that I thought to ask you. It's kind of like that opportunity where you get to sit and have coffee with someone and but this is like other as people we get to are listen in. look at us as go. we are but like other people get to listen in which is cool so uh so here you go this is my question in the last 10 years how have you seen churches change and how have you seen congregants change so this is you know leaning into church leadership uh in uh church ministry well i mean some of the obvious is of course is the frequency of attendance has gone down um you know, when I was a kid, it was, you go Sunday morning, you go Sunday night, you go Wednesday night. You're, you know, I couldn't, you, they couldn't keep me away from church. You know, I was, I was there every time the doors were open and sometimes when they weren't, you know, and then that, but that changed my life in a good way. You know, I was a part of a Saturday internship. I would beg and convince my parents to get mm -hmm. me to church on Saturdays to help plan stuff. And, you know, I would get dropped off after school and help my youth pastor out or annoy him. I don't know which one more. And now I see my own daughter, you know, she's in an internship at our church and she's not an interning today, but she came with me in today just to go wander around creative and try and help out. And I think that being around is life-giving and change is, is good. And, and so I think for most people, their attendance, I don't know what the numbers are now, Barna would tell you, but it's like one, two times a month or less. The average Christian comes to church a month and that's just, that's not, that's not good for formation. You know, you, you think about time, uh, olive uh, or a grapevine needs a trellis to climb. And whatever trellis is there is what's going to guide and inform you. So I, I think, uh, but digital patterns are up, you know, people are engaging, you know, and so I'm not, I'm not one of those guys, like I, I would rather have people, of course, in living rooms, yeah. in homes, in the small groups, in the things, but I'm, I'm, I'm not going to, I'm not going to complain if they are engaged meaningfully, if mm -hmm. they're giving, if they're serving, if they're finding a way to shine the light in their city or in their home. And um, so, yeah, so I think that, that's of course changed. I mean, I started the church in 07 when the iPhone was not a thing. And our first year of ministry, the iPhone became a thing. I was talking to our summer interns and I was like, how many of you remember life before the iPhone? And some of them were three years old, four years old, five years old. They barely remember life without this. And that's yeah. crazy to think yeah. about that. So, you now know, churches uh, are streaming from it. Uh, honestly, they're putting a tripod up and they're streaming from it. Yeah. From the iPhone, you know, so Facebook yeah. uh, and Twitter both really kind of blew up it, South by Southwest. Twitter became a thing in 07. And then Facebook opened up to anybody with an email address in 07. Um, and, and that changed the world in ways yeah. that I think is going to be like Jurassic to Mesozoic, you know, in the long-term scheme of things. Yeah. So um, that's solid. Thank you for that. Another question is, I saw this article being shared, um, a Gallup poll that went around. It says the percentage of Americans who take the Bible as little literal word of God is at an all time low. Uh, what practical ways can church leaders respond to that? Yeah, well, I think it's a crisis. I think biblical, liter biblical literacy and biblically formed uh, thinking and um a vision of what the good life is, is at the heart and the very core of what we need to be focused on as we communicate the gospel. Um, mm -hmm. you know, the, the devil's first, the first words out of the devil's mouth were, did God really say? So to doubt the word of God is at the core of how the enemy, uh, yeah. deceives, accuses, lies and murders. So, um, if he can get us doubting God's word, if we can get us, picking and choosing what of God's word is real. Did this yeah. really happen? Did Jesus really walk on water? Does it matter if he did? Is there really a Noah? Is there really a Jonah? You know, I think that's, that's, that's a crisis and it takes the power out of it. Jesus believed Jonah was in the belly of the whale and he can put it on the same shelf of truth as his resurrection. 
he referenced mm -hmm. Noah and the ark. And, you know, so I, I, I I, I, I'm with Jesus because yeah. he rose from the dead. And I think we need to, uh, we need to focus on helping people like next year, we're going to be taking our, our church through a reading plan, reading the whole Bible through the year. And, um, I, I think it's really important. Yeah. Yeah. Thanks. And, uh, being firm and confident in, in those truths, um, is like, I, I mean, I just hear the certainty and the confidence as you share that. So thanks for that. Okay. So yeah, this Isaiah says, what did Isaiah say on this one? Will I look on his contrite of heart and trembles before my word. One of our values mm. at Fresh Life is we tremble before God's word because it's alive. And I always say, like, look, if, if you don't agree with God's word, change your mind because you're wrong. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. So one more for this is looking more future. Um, so uh, most of, to most effectively reach 15 to 25 year olds, what should church leaders be considering in next week's sermon or next year's budget? Ooh. Well, I think it starts with asking the question, you know, my counselor likes to tell me we find the path by walking it. So we have to start walking to find the path. And I think if you, in your sermon prep, think and ask that and actually ask that question and have some 15 to 25 year olds in your life, you know, uh, there's, there's, there's yeah. nothing that's going to help you more of being around them and listening to the questions they ask. I just, a little bit ago, there's a uh, 17 year old in our church who just gave his life to Christ. And I, met up with him, took a walk. And I just wanted to hear the story <laughs> from him, wanted to know. I want to yeah. I want to get it in his head. You know, there's a curse of knowledge, Jason. And the curse of knowledge is you can't, once you know a thing, ever see the world where you don't know the thing anymore. You're cursed by knowledge. So anybody who can give you intel or access to save dark vision, they saved night vision by wearing a patch so that they preserved night vision. You know, you have to utilize the eyes of other people who are new converts or outsiders or seekers or whatever to look on your, the way you talk, the way you communicate, the way church looks from an outsider's perspective, like secret shoppers. You know, if someone says they've been to our church and I, and I have a chance to talk to them, I'm like, tell me everything about your experience. Do you mm -hmm. get it? Do you understand it? And we as church leaders think people understand how you are onboarded or how you get on a team or how you do you, you know, what success is as a, as a disciple at the church, they probably have no idea. The average person coming once, twice a month has no idea how to get them at your church unless you're being like so ridiculously clear about it, you know? Yeah. And if it's the only thing that you say on that Sunday, that's how they know. That's it. Because there's so much yeah. that gets thrown at someone who's a new visitor. So cool. But to um, answer I wanted... your question, don't be afraid. Don't be afraid to point people to Jesus. Like these 15 to 25 year olds, they want something real. They want something strong. They know yeah. their, their, their own little life is not enough. They want to point them to the glory of God and living for a bigger story. Yeah. Don't be afraid. So, um, this is, this is the fun part. Let's, we're going to work through this. So I just messaged your team. We're going to try to share logos right now. You're going to hop to your computer. Okay. I'm going. And you're going to walk us through a little bit of how you use it. And so, yeah, is, is, a here we go. He's on the move. <clears throat> okay. Yeah, I can see here. Oh, I think I was for telling sure, you sure. earlier, this is, yes, yeah, so this is not set up like for my last sermon on Sunday, but let me just say, first of all, how much I love logos, um, how thankful I am. Cause I've been doing it for such a long time. The passage guide. I can, can I click in here? Is it working? I don't see the screen moving screen. just yet. I can see the mouse moving, but I don't, when I click, it's not clicking. Like if I click home, is it clicking? It is not. Oh, hold on a second. Okay, I got it now. Okay, yeah. Okay. So uh, when you are on Logos, you click home. And obviously, if you're starting up a sermon, I would always start up with a passage guide, which is right here. So like, let's say this week, this weekend I was preaching Psalm 128. You're starting up your um, sermon. Yeah, you've got all your commentaries here, which is amazing. Um, your Faith Life Study Bible. You have all your resources are going to show up here. A couple of my favorite things about Logos, and if you had a gun to my head, which I, Jason, I don't see why you would do that. We're friends. <laughs> We've had coffee. I wouldn't do that. Uh, my favorite thing, uh, two of them, would be the text comparison tool. So you can open up your text. Your passage in, let me float this window. I love that feature, by the way. Where's my float this window at? I hope it'll I hope it'll show up on the screen share. It oh, may there's or may normally, not, though. You may have to keep it docked. Okay, yeah. So there's usually this float this window thing. 
and I float that out and I always have it out there. So yeah, you can look at your, and I like yeah. when you float one because you can change it. It'll, it'll be columns left to right instead of um, like vertically. Cause I would rather see it left to right, but yeah. So you can read all your text in all these different versions, which I would always do. Um, the second feature that you can't take from me, Jason, because I love it too much. So is for those who are, who are watching Levi, I just want to pause for a second. Text comparison. You've got in KJV, KJV, LEB, the message and the NLT all pulled up right now. And you can see one verse uh, across all those translations. And normally, like you said, they're, they're horizontal. So yeah, that is, and that's yeah, a so great normally feature. You'd have to go and open up every different thing, but I love at a glance. So yeah, like, let's yeah. say where I taught this weekend was verse three. Um, no, that's 29. I got to go back to 28, 28 verse three. Yes. Oh, four. Uh, your children like olive plants all around your table. That's what I taught out of New King James. Um, but then, yeah, King James, olive plants round about thy table. Shows you the difference. Percent Shoots about your table. I love the message. Your household lush as a vineyard. Children around your table, fresh and promising as young olive shoots. Obviously, paraphrase, 72% difference. But still, seeing that is a beautiful picture. And at a glance, seeing... Maybe where there's big differences. Mm -hmm. So where mm -hmm. it would shine would be, you know, like, let's go to John, like 1135. And you get to really just see like, okay, that's really what he's saying. Jesus wept. Every version, the exact same thing. Um, mm -hmm. But then the other thing I really love, and I don't know why it's not here, is my copy. Where's my copy scripture thing? It's usually under tools, isn't it? Can you not scroll down there? Yeah. So let me check. So... And this to me, Jason, is the feature that separates you from everybody. And while I have you here, what I really need to ask you is why can't we get a copy paste feature from the iPad app? Well, that's a great suggestion, Levi. We will uh, submit that to our forums for our team to make revisions. But uh, can you talk through the uh, copy scripture and why you love it so much? How can I get to it? Why is it not here? I, want to and, show I mean, I have it. Yeah, I have it right here. So have, so for those who are tuning in and watching, this is not Levi's computer. Uh, we added it on here because he requested that we um, show it off during the interview. So okay. okay, I don't see that little guy, though. Is that his? Is it here? Jason, you see it in this window? I do not. Okay. Oh, yeah. So, uh, no, no, I don't see it. So normally you go to tools and it's copy paste and it's there. You're right. Yeah. Okay. Hold on a second. Um, it's okay. Well, it's, it's, I just really want to show people because it lets you send a chunk of scripture formatted like you like it formatted straight to your notes. Can you try something for me, Levi? Can you yes. type um, copy Bible verses in the search bar up top? I'm not seeing it. Yeah. Copy Bible verses in full. Huh. Yeah, so it looks like the installation that was done didn't add it all, all in full, but... Uh, okay, yeah. so that's okay. Well, so then I'll, I'll just move on, but it is a really neat feature. It would show up as this little box, like right here, I would keep it normally, and you get to say like, send Psalm 128, 2 through 5 to the clipboard in the NIV or in the NLT or in the ESV, and then you could choose how you want it formatted. So if I'm writing a book, I want it formatted where it's going to give me a footnote with all the proper citation stuff. But if I want a, uh, for my sermon notes, I like it, you know, in all bold. So then I can put my stuff not in bold and it'll send it with it without any footnotes. Cause I don't want footnotes in my sermon notes, which is awesome. Uh, so that tool is probably over the, over the last 20 years, uh, or, or 21 years, save me a thousand hours because mm -hmm. I'm not going to a, a website to copy and paste. It's just, I can't tell you how much I love, love that. Then the next I love is like. I believe that the Old Testament um, is the best commentary in the new and the new on the old. So the treasury of scripture knowledge, TSK is easily found that way, is going to be one of your best assets in being able to cross-reference. So like, okay, I'm here in Psalm 128 and I want to read all my cross-references. All I have to do is hover over them and I'm going to be able to read them. And now I'm literally in 30 minutes going to be able to read every cross-reference 
Everyone who mm -hmm. fears the Lord, now I'm looking at mm -hmm. his mercies on his fear him. These are all cross-references on the fear of the Lord. So then I'm a fruitful vine, okay? Now I know that Jacob, Joseph, when Jacob was on his deathbed, prophesied Joseph's like a fruitful vine. That's interesting. Now I've got a great little illustration. If I want to be a fruitful husband to my wife, the vine, I got to be forgiving because Joseph became a fruitful vine by being a forgiving brother. Ah, that's how Christ loved us, the ultimate husband. You get it. Now you're rocking in your sermon prep. So then I would grab that Genesis 49, 22. If I would click it normally, it would auto-populate my copy scripture thing because I have it hyperlinked. I would send it to my clipboard and it's in my Evernote ready to be sent to screen support for my team or to my sermon notes. And on we go. This is to me the best way to start a Bible study is yeah, you're literally yeah. not reading commentaries. You're not reading really, you know, you know, anything else. You're just reading what the Bible says about the Bible. And I would encourage everyone listening, you know, get in that TSK. And it's so efficient with the hovering thing. So mm -hmm. yes, yeah, so the copy paste. And obviously you guys do that here with your own cross references, but TSK is just going to be way more robust, right? Absolutely. Yeah. I'm tracking with you. Yeah. So Thanks, yeah, the, those are a few of my favorite features. I don't know how, uh, how much more in depth we don't want to go. I could come back over, but <laughs> a little bit into, uh, if we do it again, I'll bring my computer so I can actually do 100%. it on my, uh, my own thing. Yeah. We could just have a little party show off our favorite features. Uh, Karina did mention, um, uh, there is a way to select a passage and then go into copy. Um, so yeah, we could, we could have dug into that. I know that we've got to wrap up though, um, to be respectful of time. So yeah, appreciate uh, this time, Levi. This is this is uh, this is solid. So, when are you coming back? Did you did you already say? When, when we come back, we'll have to figure <laughs> it out. We'll do it. I'll, we'll do it. We'll yeah. do it. Easy. Cool, cool. So, um, yeah, I appreciate it. And anyone who's tuning in, uh, remember, uh, stay tuned to other upcoming uh, Logos Live episodes. I think in in a week and a half, we've got Doctor Doctor Michael Bird, and then in uh, three weeks, we've got Beth Moore. Um, so we'll be Michael having Bird. some. Awesome. Well, that guy's we'll have some great conversations. You can hop on. Hop on and talk with us if you want. He Levi, did so. a thing on the Apostles' Creed that I really liked. Yeah. I don't I don't know the uh the book. He did a video series on the Apostles' Creed through Zondervan Academic that was Okay. Thank you. I'll have you just jump in and hang out he, with him. He uh, is a, a guy who probably needs a lot of sunscreen though. He looks like if he goes out in the sun, he might just uh, be uh, a puddle of ash, you know? Uh, one other thing is he's a tea drinker. He does not like coffee and he's pretty public about that. So I don't, I don't know I don't how like he him. does. I don't, I don't like him anymore. Hey, don't uh, trust him. Jason, we didn't ask answer any questions. Was there no good questions from the peanut gallery? Or is there were tons trolls, of trolls saying good negative questions. things about your uh, background? Uh, I want his, I want his hat. I want his shirt. I like his necklace. It's just like a bunch of comments on all your clothes. Um, pretty no, shallow, there's some questions on, honestly. yeah. I mean, if we had more time, I'd love to dig into it. I don't know how much time you have today, Levi. So well, let's see if we can get one good question. I'll stay on for that for just a moment. Okay. This is, this is a solid question. There's like a handful of great questions. Um, this is going back to a conversation about one of the books that you wrote. Um, and Joshua asks, can you be depressed even as a born again Christian? Oh, yeah, of course. Of course you can. Of course. Of course. Uh, uh, Jesus, I think there, there's a case to be made for experiencing that deep sorrow of the soul. Like I said, that anxiety and panic in the, in the garden. So when we talk about depression, there's clinical depression. You could be deficient. You could be, uh, have a serotonin imbalance. You, you know, women who go through their monthly cycle when their body ovulates, they can, uh, not, not release enough dopamine. And all of a sudden they crater and crash. And that's not any, you know, I'm wearing, contact lenses. It's not that I don't have faith. It's any corrective lenses because mm. I'm living on a broken planet. And uh, I, I just like a diabetic, we need a pump to pump insulin. And after they have sugar or, or before you could have a depression that comes from some sort of a, an imbalance. There's also, of course, you could not sleep right, not drink enough water. And now all of a sudden you have issues with there and you could be addicted to yeah. pornography and that's going to bring depression. They, it's The CDC says higher porn rate, higher depression rate. It's a fact. So if you can be a born again Christian and, and have it from a lot of different reasons. But then there's also just regular depression. You know, like I me, mean, I must have a bad day. I, Elijah lying under a tree. I wish I was dead. Mm -hmm. Sounds depressed to me. And the angel's like, mm -hmm. hey, man, 
How about some food? How about some water? Take a nap. How about some more food? And then God be like, Hey, come here. I'm I'm close. You're not the only one. Quit yeah. moping. Let's get back in. Focus on other people. Raise up some leaders. You know. So short answer, yes. Yeah. Yeah. Thank you. I mean, that's solid. Oh, um, cool. Do you want to cancel whatever you have next and just hang out and keep talking for a little bit? I do okay, not. That's because I need to go. I understand. Prep on my on my logos uh, scholars edition. Uh, Appreciate platinum. your time. Uh, so much. This has been wonderful. Uh, and I'm glad that we we kind of fumbled through showing off a little bit of logos. That was not really scripted before today's email back and forth. So and let's cool. be honest, it didn't go very well. Look, it left room for improvement. But wouldn't it be great if rappers were bragging instead of about like diamonds in their grills about like that they had platinum versus gold on their logos account? They are. You're just not listening to the right music probably. Yes. Because yes, that's that. all I listen to. T-bone right. and uh, cross movement. <laughs> They need to get on that. Are they still around? No, no, they're not. No. Uh, they yeah, need, probably. They need to be. The T, the cross movement workflow. I and DC know. talk. And let's get some reprise, but they'll rap about logos only. Exclusive. Well, I appreciate your time not to cut you off uh, with the Christian rappers, but for real, I appreciate your time and anybody who made it here to listen to us, uh, whether it's right now or later on. So I appreciate it. Uh, keep watching the episodes. I hope that this has been fun for you as well.